Absolutely. So are we ready to move on to uh, Saturday's festivities and what we're looking for? Why not? Uh, and the spring game, I mean, it's, 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 a, we all know what people are going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at Miller Moss, Jaden Maiava, and then they're going to be looking at the defense. And I think to me, and you know, obviously you'll get Tim's take on this. Uh, to me, you know, in a spring game, you you might see one unit do well, but of course, because these are guys going against teammates as opposed to another team, another program, you know, one unit success could be seen as, oh, that means the opposite unit it's going against is weak. So you know, when we when we look at this spring game and when we uh, make sense of it on next week's show, on next Monday's uh, show, it, it's going to be interesting what we're going to say and, and how we're going to process the tension between the offensive line and the defensive line, because they're both positions of need. They're both positions where USC does not have the full complement of bodies that the Trojans really need if they want to be an elite team in college football. They need more defensive linemen. They need more offensive linemen. They need uh, a sufficient amount of depth. They're not where they are, where they where they where they want to be. Uh, you know, where they are is still short of you know an, an ideal situation. So, to me, in the spring game, I want enough confidence building moments on both sides. So, like, I don't want one unit to dominate too much uh like I, I want it to be fairly even but i think slightly lean to the defense um given that you know the defensive line really needs uh, a confidence boost but like i can't i can't want the defensive line to dominate because that means then the offensive line is going to be asking questions about itself uh as we head into the summer so that that's going to be the tricky balance uh at this spring game is that you want to see really good play on both lines but if if you had to choose one line being a little bit better than the other i would choose the defense so tim how about how what what are the main things that you're looking at uh, in the spring game yeah i i'm just interested like you said i want <laughs> broken record i want to see the line play i want to see uh i want to see inside it's too bad again you, know, you had rakes in there taking uh, um, a lot of reps but you're gonna see you guys step up and, and see and see what they can do um, I'm, I'm interested as always spring game for me really is always, I want to see the freshmen, you know, I know what the other guys can do, you know, even guys that transferred in, I kind of, you know, I, I see what John Humphreys can do. Right. You know, I, I, I know, I know all about that. I've seen film on DeCarlos Nicholson playing, you know, so, the, so these kind of things I, I don't need to see, but I want to see how GDA Abbasiri goes up against college alignment. You know, I, I really want, I want to see it. I want to see, um, so the, the big news coming out of camp this week is, is the thing. And again, I'm a, I'm going to croak. So I'm, I'm a St. John Bosco brave. It was about us. Marcellus Williams, Mar Marcellus Williams, this, the brother of Max Williams, who was a safety here at USC, uh, really churning heads. Uh, you got Miller Moss just saying he can play corner with the best of the guys on the team right now. You, you've, you've got um, Lincoln Riley saying he just as a freshman, he's just so incredibly uh, unusually consistent for like a true freshman out there. Um, and he's making explosive. He said he's had two interceptions, and um, you know when they're, when they're going eleven on eleven, you know, in team play, um, he just and Riley kind of puts it up too. He he basically said in the um, the pre, in the Saturday press conference, he said, you know, he's been around this this team so long, right? Because his brother Max that he hasn't come in wide eyed like, ooh, you know, I'm, I'm like a typical freshman. He's been around, you know, um, his brother Mason played at Arizona State. His dad played at, Nebra at Nevada, Nevada. So I mean, it's he, he's he's a football kind of dude who, who's, who's grew up around football players, um, and I saw him at Bosco. This is a guy who could really he's he's great in coverage, and he can come up and play physical. And it sticks out in me. This is before this is when he was being um, recruited. And I knew he was because again, I was going to all the all of uh, uh, Celis's high school games. Max said, "Oh yeah, no, uh, you know, Marcellus is the best one of all three of us." You know, I mean, he, he, it was that's what he said. I'm like, like, wow, you know. So, um, it's not a surprise to me watching him play in the Trinity League, one of the most difficult leagues in in all of uh, high school football. Uh, he excelled there, and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do at USC. Now he's got a lot of dudes in front of him. We talked about Nicholson, John Humphrey, right? You know, Jacoby Cummington. Got a lot of guys with a lot of experience. You know, that are going to be playing in front of him. 
But um, I'm wondering what kind of impact and how they're going to move him along. He's definitely someone's on their radar. So you guys, on Saturday when you're watching this game, they might not play early, but they will play a lot, right? Because the the starters and the and the the older guys they'll get in, they'll have their cup of tea out there, and then they'll yank them out of there. And you get to see, you know, just like any, you want to see the young guys play. So uh, and Mayaba, right? We want to see Mayaba throw the ball. You know, again, don't take too much from a scrimmage. If it's horrible or if it's great, it's just again, it, it is a scrimmage. It's limited. They, they the plays calling to be very vanilla. You know, um, so have fun with it. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. We've got a. Uh personal uh back and forth here in the chat that i'm gonna lean on here so we got our buddy uh just billy so is just billy an oklahoma fan do we recognize just billy looks like he's an oklahoma fan he is he is quickly taken to the sec pride as an oklahoma fan apparently so <laughs> they are they are fully entrenched in the sec apparently they're in oklahoma but just billy for some reason is uh, taking his shots at me saying that uh, I'm a sunshine pumper and <laughs> that that uh, I cannot I cannot cover the SEC. He said it he's he's repeating this over and over and over. One comment was that I can't cover the SEC. The other one is that that's why I don't cover the SEC. So Billy, I don't cover the SEC except for just in the last few days we covered the spring games for LSU, Alabama, Kentucky, Florida, Tennessee, Texas A&M, <laughs> Arkansas. Who did I miss? Georgia. And Ole Miss. That's right. Ole Miss as well. And on top of that, for seven years, I covered three SEC schools, meaning not from a thousand miles away, meaning on the practice field every day, in the locker room, at the press conferences every week. I can't cover the SEC. You know, you should do what I do. I've I've seen uh, Billy in the chat, and uh, th just let let the chat take care of him. That's what I generally tend to do. Um, they've been feeding on Billy. Billy's been slinging it back pretty good, but you know. I know but it's fun. The, the, yeah, the, the numbers the, the numbers of Oklahoma fans we used to have on here. I used to look once in a while, and you know, next to L.A., uh, I think it was like L.A., San Diego, and then like Vegas. But then the next biggest one, Oklahoma City. For a long time there, you know, but it's been about a year. It's been a while. It's been a while. The 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 Lincoln, the Snake, all that stuff. That, that that's kind of disappeared from our chat. So it's been nice to see. In terms of other uh, spring game storylines, one thing in particular I'd like to see, and you know, because it's spring and and players are getting new with the scheme, especially on defense with Danton Lynn uh and, and you know like Jaden Mayaba he might be new but hopefully there will be a few organic moments what do I mean is that it's not so, so much uh a, like a scripted play working well or uh you know just uh something like pre a precise play being pulled off it's more of like if there's a 50 50 ball you know do we see a receiver come down come down and pull it down like in the holiday bowl we saw the young receivers make some really good contested catches like the kinds of things that it's not it's not so much about the x and x's and o's or the play design but just its natural instinctive ability so will we see that carry over from the holiday bowl into the spring game with the usc's new receivers you know showing just a natural ability to make plays because that was one of the really bright spots of the holiday bowl so i want to see at least one or two of those organic moments where a guy makes a difficult play, makes something out of nothing and shows that they're, that whatever existed in the holiday bowl, it's not going to stay in San Diego. It's going to continue through this season. And like, that's really in many ways, one of the big themes of this spring game is, is that holiday bowl going to remain one game, one isolated moment of excellence or no, is that 2024 offense going to Take the ball from that 2023 final note, that that grand final note against Louisville, and carry it through the whole season, and, and especially into that LSU opener where you know I keep mentioning LSU's secondary was Swiss cheese last year. You know that that offense needs to be ready to put up some points against LSU in Week One. So this spring game, you know, can we just see that natural playmaking ability emerge for members of the USC receiving core? Mm. And uh, well, when we're on that, I mean, let's face it, Matt. Yes, we'll be looking at the offense, but we'll really be looking at the defense. 
and just looking at um we talked about the interior, but also who's going to emerge, you know, in, in this defense, who's going to be that, that pass rushing disruptor on the outside. And, uh, you know, is this, is, we're going to see, see a huge leap from um, Braylon Shelby, right? For instance, making that freshman, a sophomore leap, a physically just imposing incredibly guy. And then right next to him, you got the true, yeah, um, basically true freshman and fountain coming in, you know, how, what's he going to look like? How are they going to feature him? Who's going to be running with which, you know, we don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't do much stock in, who's running with ones or twos or threes or who's running with here, because that's going to be pretty wide open, but I would really, I'm going to be really interested to see uh, just who's working with whom. And also what, what does the team look like? And I mean, what does that defense, it was kind of weird. We saw a lot of guys running for a lot, a lot of yards and, and a lot of wide open guys last year in the spring game. We probably should have said, Hmm, you know, I mean, I, I kind of dismissed it as the fact that, well, you know, it's a spring game, you know, uh, what, what can you take from a spring game? But I would like to see some some tackling and 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 just some sound defense, and that's what I will be looking at on the line. Uh, what can we do? And like you said, it does take. So is it the offensive line struggling or defensive line dominating? I I would be more than happy to see the the offensive line struggle a little bit, knowing a couple things. One that the play calling is very vanilla. Two, this defense has seen this offense a lot. You know, over these, over these past practices, they're probably sick of seeing each other and hitting each other. But um, I would be very interested to see what the line play looks. And then the linebackers, you know, we're, we're, we've, we're familiar with a lot of faces, but, you know, a lot of you guys are getting to know um, Ethan Macarinas Arnold. Macarinas Arnold, he's, uh, he, he's what comes down from uh, Oregon State. You know, he was an all Pac-12 guy. It looks like from what we hear in what, from Coach N's mouth, basically this is the li Mike linebacker we want. So we're going to see what he can look like in the middle um, and then with – Cobb and Gentry out there and Rajon Davis is, is now back fully healthy. I believe from his uh, wrist injuries that was talked about by Matt Entz uh, a little while back. So it's gonna be great to see the linebacking play too, but um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking for freshmen. I'm looking at freshmen and I'm looking at freshmen and see what they can do and who can flash. Okay. I don't want to say you're wrong, Tim, because this really isn't something you put in a right versus wrong box. It's not that kind of dichotomy. Uh, but I would say, you know, just for me in terms of a point of emphasis, I'm less, I'm less focused on the freshmen. I mean, not that like they can't and or won't be important pieces of this roster and providing quality depth, you know, if we're heading into the Big Ten and needing to be there if called upon, you know, and if attrition really sets in with this roster. So the freshmen are important. So like you make an excellent point, but I'm going to be emphasizing, you know, acquisitions in the portal who might not have hit the sweet spot last year with with certainly on defense like Lincoln Riley mentioned Nate Clifton and he was a transfer from Vanderbilt didn't make an impact last year he's been getting some positive uh comments from the coaching staff like that's the kind of guy uh I'm looking at as okay we need to see you step forward now Mr. Clifton we need to see the you know and Pregnon would be a representative example on the offensive side like he really didn't hit the target last year but he's still in the program. So obviously the coaching staff and Josh Henson see something in him. So that's like Clifton on defense, Pregnon on offense. Those are two representative examples of the kinds of players I'm looking at. Guys who are, are transfers, yeah. didn't max out, didn't make a big impact last year. I need to see those guys step forward. Right. Those are the kinds of players who need to improve in order for USC to become the program it wants to be. Then throw Mason Murphy in that basket as well because he's been yeah. around the program for a while. Now, I didn't say that the freshmen are going to be impactful. I'm just saying it's kind of like, you know, what they do on the, in the internet. They do the, the unboxing. This is like the unboxing, right? Because we, we've been able to see them in position drills. We, we've been hearing about these recruits before they were commits, you know, for years. And you see them, then now they're on the team. I'm just saying I want to see that flash. I want to see these guys in Cardinal Gold out there because a lot of them are physical freaks already. A lot of these guys, see, here's the thing. USC for years is bringing in developmental guys, not just on the line, but I mean all over the field, development guys, development guys. They got to kind of bring along through the system. So Tim's yep, going to go be out there and say hi to Tim. They're at the game. And Matt, um, I think you can fill us in on what the rest of us are going to be relegated to in terms of viewing <laughs> options. Yeah. So this, this is my soapbox moment. And uh, let, let's just start with a few, a few notes, folks. All right. One, Ohio State had its spring game this past Saturday. What, what network carried the Ohio State spring game? Fox. It was basically big noon spring Saturday on Fox. 
this upcoming Saturday, when USC before USC plays its spring game, there's going to be a Michigan spring game. Guess who has that spring game? Fox. Big noon spring Saturday. The Fox Spotlight. Network TV. You know, not, we're not talking about FS1 or FS2. We're talking about Big Fox, Mother Fox, Father Fox. All right? So Ohio State gets the big Fox Spotlight. Michigan gets the big Fox Spotlight. You know, these colossus programs, these storied programs in the Big Ten. USC usually kicks Ohio State's butt, usually kicks Michigan's butt in the Rose Bowl, historically. USC is the king of the Rose Bowl. You know, has a, has a higher Rose Bowl hit winning percentage than Ohio State and Michigan. And yet, while Ohio State and Michigan are on big Fox, USC's over in the Pac-12 network hen house. All right? So Ohio State and Michigan get the big Fox platform and USC's on Pac-12 network. Like, how, how? How does that happen? All right? Like, I know. You, no one needs to tell me that, well, USC doesn't officially become a Big Ten member institution until the summer. But come on. The next Big, big Ten, the next, foot, the next regular season football game that USC plays will be as a Big Ten program. USC football is in every meaningful sense, a Big Ten program right now. It is a Pac-12 program technically, you know, it, only in terms of legalities, all right? There is no rational world in which Ohio State and Michigan can, should get their spring games on Fox with all the attention, the publicity, the visibility, the accessibility that involves, and then USC's over here on Pac-12 network. What, why, how did something not get negotiated? Matt. How did something not get worked out? President, AD, commissioners, anything. Like, how is this game at least not on Big Ten Network? You know, that is a massive failure of everyone involved. And it's just, it's this final insult in this final amateur hour clown show that's been part of the last years of USC's Pac-12 experience. Before Tim comes in, Couple other humiliating notes. All right. Illinois is on Big Ten Network. The Illinois Spring Game, the Illinois Fighting Illini have a spring game with more visibility than USC. Syracuse, Syracuse, an irrelevant college football program. I mean, it's not Dick McPherson or Paul Pasqualoni in the late 80s or early 90s when that, that program was making New Year's Day bowl games. It's not. Uh, circa 1960 you know with ernie davis and jim brown when when the program was contending for national titles now syracuse is an irrelevant program right now syracuse is on espn plus syracuse has a spring game which is easier to access than usc and here's the big one like it, this is worse than michigan and ohio state getting fox and usc being pac-12 network here's the big one folks strap in Guess, guess whose spring game is on ESPN Plus? Clay Helton, Georgia Southern. That's on ESPN Plus. Clay Helton has a spring game which is more accessible to the American public than USC. Well, and that's my soapbox moment. He, here's what I'll say. We were on Fox last year, but there was a guy named uh, Caleb Williams everyone wanted to see. So when, when it comes to that stuff, so contractually, I don't know how it all works, but if you think the Pac-12 is going to let USC out of something, if they have some loophole, or is the fact that, quite frankly, um, maybe the man's not there this year. You know, USC kind of was coming off of a great season last year. We had the Heisman Trophy winner coming back. We They threw us on Fox. We kind of sputtered to an end. We had a really nice holiday bowl, but let's face it. They lost five games last year, lost Caleb. Uh, look at the national media. No one's given USC a chance. You know what I mean? Really, if you look at it, where, where are they putting USC in these early top 25s? They, they, they apparently have not looked at what's going on, on the defense side of the ball. I don't know what to tell you, Matt. It sucks, but, you know, hey, listen, you know, one way to fix that, you guys? Go to the game. I'll see you there because you can go. There'll be plenty <laughs> – I'll tell you what, there'll be plenty of seats available. Don't you worry about that. It's free. Uh, they'll get you for the parking, but um, great. I used to do it all the time with my kids. We used to go, I used to bring the whole family out. God knows what that costs you to do. When we're a young family and we want to go out to an SC football game. It was like we had to 
we had to think about maybe more, you know, selling one of our children in order to go to the game and eat and have hot dogs and drinks. It was that expensive, but you had that opportunity. You have the opportunity to go to the game. If you live in Southern California or heck, with even a couple hundred miles, you guys can make it a whole day. Um, I don't know the situation. Again, we were on Fox last year. I just don't see us. Maybe we're just not as appetizing. What, were we on Fox? I recall us being on Pac-12 no, ESPN? last year and ESPN two years ago. It was, yes, it was. Oh, the, you're right. Yes, oh, you're right. The big was, splash was, was when Lincoln Riley was hired that right. they put USC on ESPN. That's right. I forgot. Okay, yeah. you're right. You're right. But that, but that's my point. It's got to be something like that. It was when Riley was coming in with Caleb. Yeah, that's right. They had RG3 out there on the field. That's right. It was two years ago. Yeah. And, and people well, in the they should have had him last year. And people in the chat are saying it's contractual. Hey, folks, contracts get torn up and stipulations and demands can be made. Like, you don't think USC could like pay, pay the Pac-12 network, you know, like a, a few hundred thousand dollars so that we could just get out of this and, and have our spring game on Big Ten Network. Like, that would be worth the price. Like, people want to see USC as a Big Ten team right now and they won't be able to do it. Like you, you want to have your spring game more visible, not less, especially with, you know, Ohio State and Michigan being on Fox. Like USC is losing out in terms of positive visibility for your program. When you, you know, Ohio just, State and Michigan get network TV, not just prime cable. They get network TV. And, and you're, and you're stuck, in, uh, you're stuck on Pac-12 network. It's a spring game, Matt. It's just a spring. I think our money can be spent. You know, the university's money and, and, the, and the football program's money can be spent better than the buy them out of, of the the, the Pac-12 network, so that someone else can. But I mean, again, they're contractually. Everyone's out there saying it's contractual, but how were they able to do it two years ago? Then. What do you mean? Right? Yeah, no, I mean, two years ago was on ESPN. So, yeah, like, but the Pac-12 had a contract with ESPN. Do there they, must have been now? a contract that the Pac-12 network was going to cover all of the... So so that's where I will push back a little bit, Matt. So I'm right there with you, and not that they couldn't have made a move to try to get out of the contract, but I'm, I'm just stating that it's obvious that there is a contractual obligation there because the Pac-12 network is carrying every Pac-12 team. They're all on there. And to your point, yes, by the letter of the law... The calendar year, the school year runs through May and June with the spring sports, and this is still part of the calendar year. However, this football team, the one that, that is being assembled for these 15 practices, is the 2024 USC football team. It's not the 23 USC football team. It is the next season's football team that will be participating in the Big Ten. And it is a big deal, Tim. I think, I don't think it's a huge, enormous deal that it's the end of the world, but if if Fox is going to air Ohio State and Michigan, I don't, I can't remember that ever happening on over-the-air television that spring games were, were aired on a network. I uh, watched about maybe 20 minutes of the Ohio State one about, and, and that's, I mean, I don't know, unless you're, you're a fan... Person. <laughs> Unless you're a fan of the team, I I really can't see how much you can. I mean, I have trouble. I just do it because I'm a freak. You know, I I love USC football, but I mean, watching spring games is I mean, sometimes it's better to watch grass grow. Not if it's you know? done correctly. They no longer broadcast these spring games as games, and that was a um, using the term pet peeve is actually a pet peeve of mine. So I. I I did not enjoy the way the networks approached spring games at one point because they broadcasted them like they were games. They figured it out a few years ago that these are TV events. They need to be spruced up. They need to get the coach on the field. They basically are giving you a presentation and a preview of that season's team, the 2024 USC Trojans. And if they're doing it right and Fox does it right, and so does ESPN, I think they're pretty, pretty entertaining. You actually learn a lot about the team and you're entertained, especially when you've got a coach like Davo Sweeney, who's going to entertain uh, the TV audience. Uh, I, I think they're worth watching if they're produced correctly. I, I just think that um, 
USC and and fans, you know, if we just need USC to win a little more. Michigan won national championship last year. You know, Ohio State's like in the running every year. Uh, USC wins more; they'll be their games will Pac-12 will be gone, but they won't be on the Big Ten Network. They'll be on Fox if USC's winning like like they should be winning. Then then winning fixes everything. This 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 has a lot to do with. You guys called it ESPN. I don't know. I don't know the call. I don't know the uh, contra- contractual situation. I don't, I don't know how, how it works itself out. I do know that big part of this is just if there was, the man was there, Matt. We would be on Fox. We would be on ESPN or one of these national channels. We just would. Well, the, fi- the final point I'll make here is that you know Mark, Mark's right. Like this is not the end of the world, but it just is kind of that amateur hour context where USC is left holding the bag in ways that have not applied to the Michigans, Ohio States, Alabamas, and Oklahomas of the world. And I go back to the, what for me is the most infamous and yet representative example of how USC was treated like dirt by the Pac-12. It was that the year when USC played that overtime national TV home game against Texas and then had to go to Pullman on a Friday night the next week, no off week, like the Pac-12 scheduled USC and set the Trojans up to fail. And they did lose that game in Pullman, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas. They would never be treated like that by the, those those other conferences. And so here with, with this situation, you know, is this going to be like an earthquake moment? No, but... But with Michigan and Ohio State getting that Fox, big Fox exposure and USC being on Pac-12 network, there's a realistic chance. I mean, we don't we, we don't know this. It's speculation. But there is a realistic chance that based on the gulf in accessibility and visibility in these spring games, Michigan and Ohio State might have just a slightly better chance of getting a premium player in the spring portal than USC because of, because of that gap in exposure. It might not make a difference, but it could. And like, you don't want to be in USC situation where you have that negative differential and you're on the wrong side of the fence. You would at least like to have some degree of parity with the, in terms of the TV visibility and reachability of your spring game right during the portal window. You know, if this was, if, if, if we didn't have a spring portal and there wasn't this portal window coinciding with the spring games for each of these three programs, Ohio State, Michigan, USC, then it wouldn't be as much of an issue. But because players are, are thinking about where do I go to play college football in 2024, this differential could matter. I'm not saying it will, but it could. And like if you're USC, you don't want to have that black cloud hanging over your head. And Ohio State had the TV show of the Marvin Harrisons and the Denzel Wards and the all those guys on the sideline being interviewed and talking up how great it is to play at Ohio State. They were all there. Zeke Elliott, J.K. Dobbins, they had a line of former Buckeyes there. They had a lot of interceptions, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that good? The defense intercepted yes, yes. a lot of passes. Yeah. 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 It also means that quarterback situation is not I'll as not rock solid as Ryan Day would want. Hello. Some of those throws, that's what that throw by um the, the kid who played last year. Julian Saiyan. It was he made just a couple bad throws. It just you can't. I mean, if that wasn't even close. One doesn't have the arm to do it, but two, just what were you thinking? Throw it all the way across the field. Like you knew that thing. He hung that thing up there. You knew that thing was getting picked off. So, okay, Uncle Rico, not complaining that Ohio State and Michigan are on Fox. The complaint is they're on Fox, and USC gets gets stuck in in the outhouse known as Pac-12 Network. That's the complaint. I have no objection to Ohio State and Michigan being on Fox, and and USC being on ESPN. Like, like that that was the way it should be. It's USC being on Pac-12 Network going into the Big Ten. You know, this is this is again technically, legally, Pac-12 program. Meaningfully, in every important sense that matters, USC is a Big Ten school. And like 
let's, let's, let's consider the realm of, of college sports realignment, right? You know, it was felt for a period of time that Oklahoma and Texas wouldn't join the SEC until 2025. But they moved it up. Like, they, 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 they changed their plans. People changed their minds. Like, the idea that, that, that this was some impossible legal entanglement that USC couldn't have extricated itself from. Come on, folks. Happens all the time. People find a way, all right? And no one was able to find a way to put USC at least on Big Ten Network, if not Father Fox. I mean, that, that, that's just a grand failure. Like, no, no hey, adults not- in the room, which is a, just more BS from college sports as we know it right now. There are not many guarantees in life, Matt, but I will tell you, I guarantee you, we will not be on the Pac-12 network next year. There you go. So <laughs> take solace in that fact. Right. Tim, Tim uh, seeing the, you know, the giving us the breadcrumb of positive well, play here. is the uh, absolute S-H-I-T show. I'll go out of limb here and say that that's yeah. pretty likely we won't be on next taking a, year. Big, taking a big risk there, Tim. Yeah. Let me tell you. 